welcome to Variance episode number two of... Brutal Battle. Yeah, so the first one of these we did uh, a few months ago, maybe. This is only number two. Yeah, this is only the second one. Oh, wow. Uh, when I premiered it, I know, I, I think I said that it was a new format and we would do more, but, you know, there aren't a ton of beers that we have numerous variants of. Yeah. Well, what was yeah, it? What was the first one we did? I can't even remember off the top of my head what it was that we did. I have no idea. But I do remember that we kind of decided that it, kind of our unofficial first episode was that Jammer Pack by Six Point. Yeah, I that do was like a pack that, attack so. kind of. Yeah. yeah, basically. So for this one, we're going to do um, one beer, three different versions of the beer. The first one being the, the regular version of it, and then two variants of that regular version which I think should both be pretty interesting, in my yeah, opinion. I'm excited. Uh, I'm particularly excited because I'm getting over being sick for like a week, and I haven't really been drinking beer or anything. I haven't even had the desire to, to be honest. That's like the worst. That's how you know you're sick. Yeah. That's why I know I'm sick when I'm like, I don't want to drink. I don't want to eat junk. Yeah. Like, and that was the thing. Like, I wasn't interested in beer. I wasn't interested in food at all. Like, I had to force myself to eat meals. Like, yeah, that's when you know you're really sick. So, and this is going to be good. We have a good lineup. Yes. Yeah. And then well, we're going to eat frozen pizza. We're going to eat frozen pizza later. And we have peanut butter filled pretzels from Trader Joe's. We do. That is awesome. Mm. Which are always good with beer. Oh, and real quick, uh, we're going to talk about it on on at length on another episode at some point. But I just want to say that we have recently been to Double Groove Brewing in Forest Hill, uh, Maryland. So anyone who's in able to... To get to Forest Hill, Maryland, that's not too far, or you're in that area, who listens to this, uh, we would recommend Double mm-hmm. Groove. Yeah. It's a very small place, but uh, I think the beers are solid, and it's a fun, funky place. And, yeah. So, check oh, yeah. it out. But we'll talk about our oh, experience okay. with it more on another episode. Okay. I, just, I just wanted to throw that quick plug out there, because we went there, and we, we liked it. So Yeah. And I, well, I post on Instagram when we were there too. Yeah. So you can kind of see some pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a lot of vinyl records and yep. it's kind of, it's fun. And what's our Instagram so people can check it out? Brutal Battle Podcast. Okay. Check it out. All right. So let's get into this variance episode the right way, which is the base beer for this. So this is one by New Holland Brewing and New Holland Brewing is out of Holland, Michigan. Yeah. So yeah, that name makes, makes sense. sense. And this is a beer that a lot of people are familiar with by them. This is a big ABV barrel aged one. It is their Dragon's Milk, which is a bourbon barrel aged. Imp- uh, it just says bourbon barrel aged stout, but it's an imperial stout because it's eleven percent alcohol, basically. So, yes. So we're doing this one, and this is a newer batch of it. Uh, this was bottled about mm, four months ago, maybe. So let's crack into this. And that's the thing. Uh, New Holland, I don't think they're doing cans yet. Or at least they're not. Oh, sorry. They are. So wait, we have a can on <laughs> the table here. We do have a can. Um, I think they're leaving the regular Dragon's Milk in bottles, though. Mm-hmm. At least for now. The, one of the variants. One of the variants is, in a, is in a can. So that was dumb. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to blame that on being sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's just what I'm going to do. All right, so let's crack into this. I hope I like this. I remember loving this beer. I'm not going to go too hard on it because yeah. 11% and we're going through a few. So Yeah. So apologies that it's not crazy or that it's not like four different variants of this beer, but it, it just kind of comes down to what we can get our hands on, you know? And we were at Wine World maybe about two months ago when we saw this, and, sure. we, and we were like, oh, the regular one and two different versions – we should pick that up for a variant episode, so. Okay. It looks like a stout. It's a little thinner than I thought it would be. Yeah, so um, since they do just say stout, I guess maybe they set you up for the expectation of maybe a thinner body to it yeah. as opposed to being imperial, so. So we just made chili in the house, and I'm smelling the chili, so I really have to get my nose in there. So I get a little soy sauce to it, and then I also get a bunch of raisin coming yeah. through. I'm getting, I'm definitely getting the bourbon. I'm getting a little yeah. vanilla. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of a leathery note in the nose as well. And I think that's kind of going along with that soy sauce. It's like soy sauce, leather. Um, there's a little caramel that I assume is coming from the bourbon. It smells like bourbon. It smells like raisin. Hmm. Okay. I smell a little... I, I definitely smell like a a little bit of a bourbon astringency on the nose. I just took a sip. 
I would say it's um kind of it has a little bit of a sweetness. Oh, yeah, it's a lot sweeter um, than I would think. Like a uh, milk chocolatey sweetness. Not as much bourbon coming through. I actually get an okay amount of bourbon. Mm, I'm not getting as much as I like. I get a little bit of that astringency that I said I was smelling. I definitely get a burn in the back of my throat when really? I taste I don't it. Get, I don't oh, get a I burn do. at all. I definitely do. Mm. Eh, okay. Maybe I'm on the second mm -hmm. sip I got it. That raisin flavor is definitely there. Um, there is a chocolatiness to it, like you were saying, mm -hmm. but it, it's not as pronounced as you might think for a stout of this level. Yeah. Hmm. That, like we just said, definitely a thinner body. Yeah. Not as, um, it's a, definitely a mild, more mild bourbon barrel aged stout. Yeah. If it's such it, a it's, thing, I don't know. Okay. Except for the alcohol astringency and the ABV of it. It's more of like an easy sipper bourbon barrel aged yeah. out. You know what I mean? Just because of viscosity, like it's thinner. Yeah. And the flavors aren't like crazy. Yeah. I don't want to say it's watery, but like all the flavor flavors are dialed down. Right. Yeah. Because it's stout and not imperial, I assume. And I guess that's why they make that distinction. Because it's not going to be like super heavy body, like rich, creamy, all that yeah. jazz. So. Okay. Mm. It's decent, though. So... It's not my favorite of no. barrel-aged stouts, as far as that goes, but... You ready to go on to number two? Yeah, we're going on to number two. And curveball. Because number two <laughs> is Curve, what? Curveball is not part of this variant. It's just a beer that I got from Mystery Beers, but we didn't record, and it's a hazy IPA, and we just wanted to have it on the podcast. Because why not? We have it. And we... Want to make sure we drink them fresh. So, <laughs> so, so like, let's it, just throw it in. So it's a bonus. It's a bonus, bonus beer. beer. And I also thought it would be good to do it right now because it's like a palate cleanser for the variants of of the um, Dragon's Milk. Okay. So. so it is Hazy IPA. It is called Official by Bells. Okay. it's good. Thank you. Uh, it's only about a month and a half. I think it's almost exactly a month and a half in the it can. Is. Pungent American hop, American hops combined with wheat and pilsen, pilsen malts result in a smooth, aromatic, juicy IPA. And Bell's is out of Comstock, Michigan. And it is 6.4%. Oh, you know what? On here it says shelf life, six months. For a hazy IPA? That's what it says. For an IPA, period? I don't know. I'm just reading what that's, was on the can. I've never... That's... Okay. Well, we'll first of all, we'll be the judge of that because it's only a month and a half in the can. But come on. Six months? <sighs> I mean, the shelf life for an actual straight up IPA should be three months, basically. No. Maybe four, it, depending on what taste you're okay with. But the six months, come oh, on. Oh, man. This smells like I love my hazy IPAs. Yeah, it smells good. It smells what like what people would say. It smells juicy. It's yeah, not, you know. it does. It's very citrusy. Ooh. There's almost like a like a fruit stripe gum scent okay. to it. I was gonna say, um, you know, you get all your citrus. You, I'm getting pineapple. Yeah, but like when I say fruit stripe gum, there's actually like a bubble gum smell to so? it that's mixing with that bright citrus. Yeah, there's like a slight bubble gum. Yeah. Okay. Which I like. I mean, the nose is very juicy nice. Juicy fruit. Juicy fruit. You very said nice juicy one. fruit gum? I, I originally said juicy fruit, but then I kind of take that back because it tastes more like bubble gum with like a citrus oh, to it. okay. Gosh, man, I used to love juicy fruit gum. I just got like a wave of like blast from the past. <laughs> that gum like, but it would only be good for like a minute. and then you, I know. You know? Yeah. Well, that's like most of that gum. Gosh, I really want some bubble gum now. Well, you know why you stopped chewing bubblegum. I know. I've, I'm old lady. I have, like, TMJ. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's drink this beer. <laughs> All right. I mean, it looks like a hazy oh, IPA. Yeah. We, we picked everything that. out smell-wise we can, but it's a yeah. very, it's ni very nice. Hazy, though. it's yellow. And a month and a half in the can. Super easy. Very thin. Yeah. Eh, it's okay. A little yeasty. The one thing I will say about it... Is that it's not as like gross, bready, yeasty 
as a lot of hazy IPAs end up being because people do a terrible job making hazy IPAs by and large. There's more bitterness to it as yeah. well than I would assume for a hazy. A uh, hazy. But, I mean, it's one of those things. One of the reasons I don't really like hazies all that much, it's a huge, awesome nose, and then yeah. the flavor is, like, barely there. You know? It's like a letdown. But I am I am happy with the level of bitterness that they've incorporated into it. And, like I said, I am happy that it's not, like, crazy, gross, yeasty flavor. So Yeah. It's okay. I mean, I'll drink it. I'm not... And I feel like... I can't even say that on a lower level it tastes the way it smells because no. I get like nondescript little bit of citrus. I get a bitterness. And I get a bit of a sweetness. And that's about it. Yeah. And then it's just like every sip just kind of like gets rolled right off your tongue. Yeah. Just not. Why is this style? Why are we doing this? Yeah. I'd rather have a two hearted by Bells, to be honest. Oh, sorry. Oh, water Got on water the table. On well, on you too. Oh, oh, that just dripped all over, <laughs> all over my pants. Sorry about oh, that. Oh. Okay, so we had our quick little detour there. So now let's uh, pop back over to the variants. And I'm very excited about this variant of Dragon's Milk because it seems kind of odd. Okay. And it so could this be is cool. the one in the can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so it's Dragon's Milk White. So it's bourbon barrel aged white stout and it's only 6%. So I've known of people doing white stouts before. I've, I've known of people doing white stouts before, but I've never heard of or seen. Oh, you might want to go a little slower on that. Why? I'm just like throwing it in there. It's only 6%. Oh, okay. Well, so anyway, like I was. put that much in there. Sorry. Like I was saying, um, I've, I know of people having done white stouts before. In fact, we had a really awesome one a few years ago when we were down in Florida and we got it from uh, Cigar City. It was like a cookies and cream white oh, stout. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. I was like, how do you remember all yeah, that? Yeah, no, that was awesome. So, like, white stout's a thing. It's not super yeah. popular, but I've never heard of anyone barrel aging a white stout. Yeah. So, when I saw this, I was like, that seems like it could be really cool. I'm excited to try that. I just, it looks I just, like an IPA, though. Yeah. I just like white stouts, golden stouts, whatever, because it's just such a mind. Yeah. It's like a, yeah, it's a style. I was going to use the F word, but I know you don't like it's that. So fun. it's a mind it's, fuck. It's a, it's a uh, style bender, basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it looks like an IPA. It's very, it's relatively orange. It's slightly hazy. Huh. It's got a decent head to it. It's retaining he a head. This is like... Okay, close your eyes. What the hell? Yeah, what does it smell like? Well, I get a uh, light honey. I wouldn't say it smells like a stout. No, no. It smells sweet. It smells... Yeah, it's definitely honey. There's something that's... I think it kind of smells like Mad Elf. Hmm... Do you get something that's that smells a little like vinegar y no. which is weird? Wait, I'm getting like else. I'm getting wheat. Yeah, okay. Definitely. I agree with that. I get the wheat. There's a slight apple. There's a very there's small a, apple note yeah, in the nose. Yeah, there's some sort of fruit in there. Yeah, definitely apple. See, I'm like I keep thinking mad elf, so I keep thinking cherry. There's a slight caramel. To be honest. I mean, there's, yeah, there's definitely a sweetness. Which I like. Okay, I'm going in. I don't smell any real alcohol to it, though, so, and I wouldn't say that I smell bourbon, either. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. smell like any sort of stout. It doesn't smell like it's been barrel-aged. Yeah. So, it's kind of like, if mm. you just gave this to someone and let them smell it without knowing what it is, I don't think they'd get even close to either white stout or barrel-aged. Okay. So. Well, I took two sips. I'm not getting any barrel but it's definitely very vanilla-y and creamy. Yeah. Tastes like a cream ale. Um, I, I like think, it, though. I think where the barrel's showing is I actually get a little bit of wood character in mm. it. And I think that's where the barrel is showing up. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, I like it, too. I wasn't expecting that level of vanilla to be there because I wasn't really smelling it. No. But 
It's a, like a vanilla cream ale. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. taste at all what I think it no. should be. Mm-mm. But I, but I really like it. <laughs> yeah. No, that that's a really good point. Is that it? Yeah, it tastes like a vanilla cream ale with a little bit of a woody character to it. Yeah. That's good. It is good. That's a tasty beer, although it's. I don't think it's Problem, at all like, what they're marketing I know. it as. I feel like if you. There could be more people who like this beer, but they're not going to. Like, I'm not getting it. Right. Like, it's, again, again, not not what the can. Yeah, I mean, based off what they're calling it, people are going to buy it and expect something different than what they're actually going to get. So you're probably going to get more people actually being let down yeah. by the beer as opposed to being more open-minded about it and being like, well, do I like it? Like, I mean, I'm is- let down because it's not what I want it to be, but... I still like the beer, so I'm okay with it. You know what this tasting this makes me really want because it tastes a little bit like it is the carton brewing uh, barrel aged imperial cream ales that we had on the carton brewing episode that we did a showcase for. This makes me want it vanilla ice cream. Like this could be mm. a good beer float beer. Well, actually, I mean maybe, but for me personally, and we need to go back and do another food and beer episode because it's been a little bit but um we uh or i typically like contrasting or complementing flavors uh to play off beers i know some people like same flavors but for me what ends up happening with it is that it'll take that flavor away from whatever you have second whether it's the food or the beer well it reminds me of snapple used to have it wasn't a tea. It was a carbonated vanilla drink. Huh? I haven't even heard of that. Yeah. I used to have it at my grandma's house with vanilla ice cream, and we would make floats, and it was Ooh. so good. Because you could have everything at grandma's, like Fruit Loops, yeah. like stuff your parents wouldn't let you have. I remember way back in the day being in the Snapple, and my flavor was Mango Madness. Do they still make that? Maybe. I, I mean, like I, they, Snapple still exists, I believe. Snapple does still exist, but I feel like they've really weeded <clears throat> down their flavors. There used to be, like, a ton. Well, you got to figure out what's really selling and then cut out the dead yeah. weight, in Plus, a sense. I feel like people aren't buying as many sugary drinks anymore. It's true. Okay, so let's uh, let's do our final variant on this one. And I believe Rebecca's probably most excited I, about this one. Well, yeah, definitely. I am least excited about this oh, one. Oh, really? It's, yeah, because... People, if you've been listening to the podcast, you'll know why when I tell you what it is. So this is the Dragon's Milk Reserve Oatmeal Cookie. And it is bourbon barrel-aged stout with cinnamon, raisins, Mm -hmm. brown sugar, oats, and vanilla extract. Uh, So the cinnamon Mm. is the point. And actually the raisins, too. The cinnamon and the raisins are the two things that don't excite me. It's 11%. Just, oh, sorry. Was it this? What? What? Oatmeal cookie beer do we have that I loved? That um, was a Cigar City? No. Yeah, it was Cigar okay. City. It was so well done, and even you liked it. Um, well, you could appreciate right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, that was one where I was just like, they did a great job for what it's supposed to be, but I don't really want to drink it. So I'm sorry, what was the ABV? The same as the regular. It's 11. It's 11. Okay. So See, I wonder why the Golden was only 6. Uh, probably because they didn't have it in barrels nearly as long, and it's a it's a lighter malt bill, so it probably didn't have as much sugar, mm-hmm. so it didn't have enough. It couldn't, right? It couldn't. High. You couldn't even reach like the stability of the sugar, or I'm yeah. sorry, the stability of the beer, and there wasn't enough sugar to get it to a higher ABV, and it actually tasted good. Yeah. And then also, I don't think they let it have as much time in the barrels because. It's lighter. It can't stand up to it as much. Yeah. But I like it more than the regular dragon's milk, actually. Yeah, so, me too. Agreed. You know. then, now, this, I think it looks like a uh, fuller body than the yes. regular. I was thinking that while I was pouring it, that as it was coming out of the bottle, it was definitely looking more mm. viscous. Not by a ton, it's, but enough that it was noticeable. I'm, it smells creamy. It smells vanilla. I'm getting a little cinnamon. I'm getting a little bit of that brown sugar, to yeah, be honest. it smells really good. It actually does smell good. None of the flavors are overbearing. They're just like little kisses. Yeah. 
Although I do smell something I don't like. What is it? If you, if you say perm juice, I'm going to punch No. Green olives. Oh. I smell green olives. You know, stone fruit. A st- a stone fruit. I'll never let that go. Whatever. When people... You all know when people say stone fruit for a descriptor and they have a podcast for describing mm-hmm. beer, you're just being lazy. Yeah, I can't not smell that yeah, green it's olive. Hard. It's gross. Anytime you smell something you don't like, that's all you smell. I know. But I did smell the brown sugar first and I was liking that smell. I did smell the vanilla extract. That was nice. And I did smell a bit of the raisin as well. I'm not really getting the cinnamon. I got the cinnamon. I mean, oh I no, there it is. I don't know if I pick out cinnamon, but I definitely some sort of spice because I know it's cinnamon. I can mm-hmm. say cinnamon. Okay, True. I took a couple sips. Oh, it's nice. A cinnamon's definitely there in the flavor, but it's 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 within check. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of getting everything I got on the nose. Yeah. Um, and there's a little bit of like a um, dark chocolate note on the finish mm-hmm. that I like, followed by a bourbon character. That's coming off a little caramelly, but maybe yeah, that's partially because of brown sugar. It's definitely sweet, but not overly yeah. sweet. Um, it's sweet. Not, I would not guess eleven percent. No, Mm-mm. that's a good. That's a really good point on that one. Um, no, I I think they did a pretty good job with this. I don't I like it. I don't taste green olives, so that makes me very happy. Thank goodness. Hmm. But, I really like this. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's very good. There's a decent it's... bitterness to it. There's a little bit of an astringency at the end. And yes, like we were saying, it looked like it has a bit more body does. than the original. I think they executed well. I think it's, yeah. all the flavors are there. They're well within check. I'm not really perceiving the raisin. I, didn't, I know you smelled it. I didn't really even smell it. I, t- I taste it a little bit, but I can't decide if I would... If I didn't know what was in it, I would probably think it's from the barrel. Mm. You know, like a raisin from being a higher alcohol and from the bourbon. So, um, so I don't know if I'm actually tasting the actual raisins or something that would naturally occur. I don't know. Yeah, that's but true. I do like what the brown sugar does to this. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Although it might also be making it a little too sweet. It, it, it borders too sweet, but I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think it's too sweet. Right. It's not like sickly sweet, but you you definitely drink it and you're just like, oh, this is on the sweet side. Yeah. So it kind of like perks you up as like, I don't know how much of this I can really have because it's sweet. I mean, that's what it should be though. You know, reading the description and you have right. brown sugar and the, I mean, it's exactly what it should be. But, and I will say that it's a, it's a triumph for New Holland that we're debating whether or not we can drink a lot of it because of the sweetness not because of the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> because like we said, you can't really perceive no. the alcohol that much. So that's well I mean, known. it's a great dessert beer for sure. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, this with vanilla ice cream, in my opinion. That could work. And it's, and again, it's not overly sweet. I don't like beers that are like too, too, too sweet. Right. It okay. is on the sweet side though. You ready? Yeah. So let's go ahead and rank it. Okay. I know. I mean, I'm just, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You're going to go in tasting order? Well, no. Oh. I was going to say that I don't know whether we should include the oh. official by Bells, but for me, it's not going to matter because that's going to be my last beer anyway. <laughs> oh, so. okay. So, no, yeah, it's my last beer as well. Yeah. So, for the podcast overall, the official is the fourth and final beer. Not okay. that good. And so, I of think, the very... I think our ratings are going to be the same. That's number four. Number three is the original Dragon Milk. Yeah. Yep, the original Dragon Milk, and just the bourbon you, barrel. Leaf. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go white Dragon Milk. For your number two? Yeah. Nope. Oh, you're doing a cookie number two. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so for Rebecca, her number two is the Dragon's Milk, Dragon's white. milk white. But that's my number one, because I really like the taste of They're that They're both beer. really good. Yeah, and then number two for me and number one for Rebecca is the Reserve, the Oatmeal Cookie. Uh, bourbon barrel aged that with cinnamon, raisins, brown sugar, oats, and vanilla extract. Yeah. And maybe part of the body is coming from the oats, like that okay. increased body. Yeah. Because that's a big difference between it's a huge, the yeah, regular it's a and that difference. one. So. But okay. Good. I'm happy with these. For sure. Except the official, because, well, 
you know, we should just stop making hazy IPAs. Uh, I don't know if we need to stop. Let's make more barrel aged stouts. Yes. Specifically, let's do more barrel aged white stouts. Let's try that. Let's just do more. more white stouts in general, though. Yeah, agreed. They're fun. So let's I'm trying do more cream ales. Oh my god! Please, more cream ales. Like, I can't tell you how excited I get on the inside, sometimes on the outside, when I see <laughs> when I see a cream stout either on a tap list or yeah. in the store because. It's not done much. I know we said we were going to talk about Double Groove on another episode, but I want to talk about them now because it's fresh in my head. And All right. I mean, you can just throw a few minutes. Yeah, out. just go ahead. We let you know. You look at their tap list, and you're like, eh, okay, nothing overly exciting because they have all of your basics, all your standard beers. Yeah, but they execute well. Although I would not say standard, well, because okay. they have they had an extra special bitter on there, and who's doing that? Well, like they have. I want to say your classics. They have a range. They do. Nothing like when I say special, like they're not doing crazy things. They're right. doing they had, like throwback classics. Well, they had nine taps, and of that, only three of those were hoppy, right? Because mm-hmm. they had like a pale ale, an imperial IPA, and a and, regular yeah. IPA. None hazy. Right. So awesome. And then they had. A red ale, an Irish red, which when we were going, we were like, "Who, who's brewing Irish reds? Yeah. You know what but I mean? It was like, delicious. No, it was good. <laughs> it was tasty. I was very surprised with that. They had a blonde which on there. Was really also good. Also amazing. Yeah, that blonde was really good. Then they had a brown ale. Just solid. I think the brown ale was our least favorite beer. Yeah. Either that or the pale ale, to be honest. I Actually, for me, my pale ale, the my least favorite was the pale ale. Yeah. I didn't really care for that one. And then it was the brown the ale. The brown were, was in. A lot of people there were drinking that brown, though. That's true. Then they had the, a milk stout that was, which was solid. solid. That was yeah, a good one. That was really good. Um, they had a Belgian strong ale, which we did not try. And that was it. You said nine taps. And then the ESB. Oh, yeah. Yep. The, and the ESB actually was my favorite. Yeah. I really so liked that We went beer. back a week later. Yes. Carlin got a pint of the ESB. I got a pint of the blonde. Mm-hmm. And it was tasty. It was, I was between the blonde and the stout because they both were really good. Yeah, yeah. I want to keep going back. I like the fact that at least at the moment, their tap list is focusing on lower ABV. Yeah. Their highest ABV beer was their Imperial Stout and it was 8%. Everything else was below that mm-hmm. and I was very happy about that because we need to start focusing more on can you go to a bar or a brewery and have multiple beers as opposed to just putting out all these Imperial Stouts and barrel aged you know, this, that, yeah. and the other, and just high ABV and knocking someone out after just a few beers. Well, it was, the atmosphere is just very um, chilled, community friendly. You know, they have a large record collection yeah. and they have records playing there. You can go up and you can pick out what you want to have played. Well, they're called Double Groove because of the double grooves on records. Yeah. So it's very music oriented. And yeah, like they, they have like a big cool mural in there that's that's a, a painting of like um a like dj equipment basically like musical equipment that then has chords coming out of it that turn into like hop vines that mm-hmm. then go to the brewing equipment it's really cool looking and at this point they're just doing you know bring your own food except on the weekends they'll have, they have food trucks. you still can but they have food trucks then yeah. too so, so but we just picked up jersey mike i love jersey mike subs Love it. Ate some subs, drank some beer, yeah. and it was nice. And then, you know, the it was founded, and the owners are two couples, two mm-hmm. husband and wife couples, and um, just cool. It's like a passion project. And they're um, they're just in there working, yeah. pouring beer. And, nice people. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about it is it's small. And I know that, like, that's, that's a dumb criticism in the sense that... Um, You know, it's just what they could afford, basically. Like, you don't want to get a gigantic space when you're just starting a brewery. But it's so small that, like, if a lot of people want to go on the weekends, they have to turn them away because they don't have, like, outside seating or anything. So it could get crowded really fast. We went during the week, so it was not crowded, so it was fine. It was still still pretty. There's still people. Still, I mean, there's only, what, one, two. Maybe six, eight seats at the bar, and then there's some tables. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's going to fill up quick. But and a leather couch. Which and is a leather cool. couch. I like that. Yeah. Um, I hope they do well, though. Yeah, I hope so, too. We'll, we'll go back. We'll definitely oh, go sure. back. Yeah. I want to see if they keep putting out more low ABV stuff. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. I would look like we were just talking about, I'd love to see them do like a cream ale, like a oh, whole sh- Yeah. Oh, God. I would, I would be Pilsner. there in a hurry if I saw that they put on like a culture of cream ale. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm coming. Well, I overheard the one staff member saying that they were doing something because the, the guys, last time we were there, the two guys that were sitting behind us, they, at least one of them was drinking the brown mm-hmm. and the one staff member was like, yeah, I really like the brown too. And she said, we're doing it. Blah, 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 blah. It should be released. Blah, blah, blah. And so I couldn't a hear it. version of the yeah. brown? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't hear it. And I should have just asked, but. Yeah. Because now all I know is blah, blah, blah. Right. But um, that's that's exciting, you know. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. Um, I was kind of hoping they would take some of those good, because they have good base beers and mm-hmm. kind of do some fun things to them. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, the I feel like that's pretty much we covered everything. Then I guess we don't need didn't need a whole episode for it anyway. No, I mean it was just just tack yeah. it on at the end of this one. That's yeah. fine. So yeah, shout out to Double Groove folks. Yeah. Also shout out to Jersey Mike's. Jeez. And the Jersey Mike, the staff, they're just like kids. Yeah, but they're so nice. But they're so nice and Always. so hardworking. Yeah, and that just makes me feel. Positive, because I know sometimes youth, youth these days get a bad rap, and uh, they're, un- they're hustling. Justly. They're hustling there, the Jersey Mike's there. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, we've enjoyed trying these variants yeah. of Dragon's Milk, and I'm going to start thinking about what we're going to do for the next variant episode, because yeah. there are some ways we can go. And, like, I think we talked about it on the first variants episode, but there is a pack of beer from... Heavy Seas, and it's different variants of their... Oh, yeah. um, loose Cannon? Loose Cannon, yeah. So maybe we yeah. should do something like that. Although we'd have to buy the whole pack. I don't know if we want all of that. Well, we'll figure it out. Anyway, who knows where we're going next? We have so many formats. We're, <laughs> we're going to keep trucking here. Tune in. So thank you, everyone, for checking this one out. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, BrutalBattlePodcast at gmail.com. The social medias, you know it. But until next time... Keep it brutal.